Hello guys, it is TJ here, with Bashlam channel. Today we are going to start, a new series called, OSCP Preparation Path, with TriHackMe site. Well, I need to clarify first, if you want to use the learning paths, you need to subscribe, TriHackMe first. Without delay, let's get started. If you see the OSCP learning path, it will be a 48 hours room, and it includes 25 machines with various levels. First you can see, the introduction part. In introduction part, you will learn about, OpenVPN which will help you to connect with their rooms. And other things are, getting started part, and advanced exploitation, and buffer overflow exploitation, and active directory, and finally the extra credit. So, let's do the first challenge, to connect OpenVPN. First, we need to go to the access page, and download the VPN pack. After that, you can find the configuration guideline, for the different operating systems. Since we are using Kali machine, I can use the OpenVPN tool, to connect the VPN. You can check if you're connected to the network by a green tick in the access page. After that, the final step is browse to that machine IP and get the flag. Now that we finished the first task of this learning path, let's move into our actual challenges. Now we have arrived at today's topic, which is the Vulnversity machine. This is a very basic and easy machine. We will learn about active reconnaissance, vulnerability scanning, privilege escalation, and the web application attacks from the CZ rooms. And the important thing is that we always need to take the notes while performing the testing. So let's deploy the machine. While waiting for the IP address, we can create our notes using Cherry Tree. Now, the next phase is, reconnaissance. We will gather information about this machine, using a network scanning tool called, nmap. We got the results, as you can see, there are 6 open ports available, in this machine. And let's update our notes as well. And, one thing I need to tell, that I will do the testing first, after that, I will answer to those questions. While looking at the nmap results, the web server is running on the port 3333. Let's browse to that page, and enumerate the source code. Investigating the website code, nothing of use. The next step is to use GoBuster to scan the website for any hidden directories. So, run the command like this. From the scan, we see an interesting URL, slash internal. By navigating to that URL on the website, brings us to a page that we can upload the files. Next, let's try to compromise the web server using PHP reverse shell. You can get the reverse shell from Pentesting Monkey's GitHub. Get the reverse shell and modify the IP address and the port number. Then, try to upload a PHP reverse shell. However, upon attempting to upload the .php file, it tells me that the extension is not allowed. The task description gives us a hint. That telling us to use burp suite and a list of alternative PHP extensions. The hope is, one of these extensions might be able to avoid the blacklist and run our reverse shell code. So, let's fire up the burp suite, and turn on the intercept. Since, this is an intermediate level tutorial, I believe that, you are well aware with burp suite. And, remember to configure the proxy on the web browser. So that the traffic may get intercepted, by burp suite via this proxy. After that, upload any extension file, on the upload page of the web server, so that the request gets captured. You can see, we captured the traffic. We need to brute force this extension. 
For that, we need to send this traffic to an intruder for brute forcing. Then, in the payload tab, add the payloads. After that, add the payload position. Now, start the attack. Now, if we see here, we can identify the correct payload in two ways. One is the length, and the other is the response of the web page against this extension in the raw tab. We can see the PHTML length is different than others. So, let's look into that. While looking at the page content, that we know that .phtml extension is allowed. It's time to upload the PHP shell with the PHTML extension. So, now let's rename our reverse shell and upload it. Great. We got the success message. That means we successfully uploaded our shell. After uploading the script, let's use Netcat to listen incoming connections on port 9001 like this. Now, navigate to slash internal slash uploads. You can find our uploaded script. Just click that and see the listener. Cool, we got the shell now. But we got only PHP shell. Let's get the stable shell using Python PTY like this. And then export the xterm variable for the ease of access. By navigating the home directory, I found a user called Bill. Let's move into Bill's directory and get the user flag. Let's see the process of this machine. Nothing interesting. Now that we have the shell access, but we need to escalate our privileges to root. This section is quite tricky and expects that you know about the set UID function and Linux permission stuff. A little theory is already explained regarding this function in the task page. Let's see, we have wget or not. Yes, we have that. So we can transfer the files using this. We are going to use a privilege escalation script name called linpeas. I have already downloaded that. And I will leave a link in the description so you can able to get it. Here I'm using Python 3 HTTP server on port 80 for transferring this script into the target machine. After that, we can download it into the target machine using wget. Remember one thing. You need to get that script file into the temp directory. See, we got the file inside our target machine. So change the permission and run the script. In the result, the red color will indicate that we can do something with them. After some enumeration, I found that systemctl file. If we check the permissions for the password file, we can see that S's indicate the SUID. That means SUID set for this file. Let's list out all SUID files by using this command. By looking at the result, systemctl stands out of all other files which have set UID enabled. Because it's not normal to have set UID enabled on systemctl. I got curious and ran the same command on different hosts and found that none of them had the systemctl with set UID enabled. So, we can confirm that linp's result was correct. We can use systemctl file to get privilege. PTFO bin is a great place where you can find Unix binaries that will help you to take privileges by bypassing the local security policies. So, in the site, search for systemctl. You will find the command for suid. Copy that into our notes and modify like this. After we modify the command, let's run these command one by one. Basically, it will read the root.txt file and save it into the temp folder as output.
If we read the output, we can get the root flag. That's it guys, we did the challenge, let's answer to those task questions now.